Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Cameron, here again, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. Uh, I wanted to uh, see if, if we could do, if pull off a moon landing, because, uh, you know, all of the uh, talk recently has been about the moon, of course. I don't know if you guys have uh, been up to date with the latest space news, but uh, NASA just released uh, who they're partnering with for the uh, Artemis program, so meaning they picked a, a private company to build a lunar lander. They picked three companies, a SpaceX, uh, Dynetics, uh, or not Dynetics, uh, uh, maybe it was Dynetics, I'm not quite sure, but there's a national team in there too, and, and it was all sorts of cool stuff, so it got me excited about uh, our, the next moon landing. So, I went ahead and I, uh, I'm building a moon lander right now, uh, I'm building the uh, descent stage, and the ascent stage is already built up there with the capsule, and then there's the landing legs, but uh, I want to do something a little different. Uh, I was kind of uh, questioning, well, could NASA have uh, landed uh, someone on the moon, or some, some people on the moon, I guess, with the space shuttle? And of course, you know, most people would say no, the space shuttle was only designed to go to low Earth orbit, it can't land on the moon, blah 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 blah, there's no atmosphere on the moon, yeah, yeah, I get that, I get that. But, what if you add a bunch of boosters, and then throw a moon lander in the payload bay. Do you think you could do it? Well, that's exactly what I'm doing here. So now the moon lander part is pretty much pretty much finished, um, and then now we're going to switch on to the, the actual shuttle part here. So uh, if you notice, I, I built the, the moon lander as a sub-assembly, and then, uh, or I guess a different ship, and then I, I put it into the uh, into the space shuttle as, the, as part of the payload. So, um, so that's what I'm gonna do. But this is this is a little different. Um, as you can see, I, I put a little bit of uh, liquid oxygen and oxidizer uh, in there, or liquid oxygen and oxidizer, both the same thing. Liquid fuel and oxidizer, sorry. And uh, that way we can get a little bit more delta V. Uh, and then also, uh, I put some jet engines on there because I am terrible with space shuttles because. I never can quite get them to land the way I want to. Uh, I either just like tumble when I'm when I'm re-entering, just like just like spiraling death spiral, or um, or it, it comes in perfectly, but I'm like you know half halfway around the world from the from the Kerbal Space Center. So I put some jet engines on there, and then uh, also you'll notice that I'm using liquid fuel for the boosters instead of SRBs, and I'm using two of them on each side. Uh, this is gonna give me a little bit more a uh, little bit more delta V. This is this is kind of a heavy li li lift launcher, Jesus, sorry. So it kind of reminds me of the Energia Buran, the, the, you know, the Soviet space shuttle, the one that only flew like once or twice, uh, using liquid liquid fuel as their boosters instead of SRBs, which I think is, uh, I think it's better. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of SRBs. I mean, they're cool, they're cheap, and whatever, but, you know, liquid fuel master race, am I right? So here we are, pretty much complete with the uh, construction of the space shuttle, and, uh, we're gonna set off to the moon, so I kind of uh, nice easy launch here. I I, I set it in the the dogfighting camera view just because I, uh, I I liked watching the 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 engines gimbal because you can really see how much piloting I had to do. Just look at look at that. It's all it's just twitching and, and moving around. That's me actively piloting this thing into orbit because space shuttles are one of the harder things to fly into orbit because they're not you know they're asymmetrical, so they. Um, they're kind of unbalanced a little bit when it when it comes to the thrusting thrust I don't know. thrust I'm not sure but as you can see I'm using the three vector engines just like uh, just like the normal space shuttle but um, I think the reason why everybody uses those engines is, you know instead of any other engines that maybe have more thrust or, or whatever uh, it's not because they look like the actual RS25 main space shuttle engines I, I like them because they have so much gimbal range and that that is the, that's the thing that really matters is uh, how much gimbling they can do. I think they have like 11 degrees of gimbal. Oh, and there was a there was a glitch there where the space shuttle kind of disappears when you're time warping, but that's not a problem. It's still there. But yeah, so that's that's the that's the main uh, main thing. As you can see, I'm holding on to the external tank all the way into uh, all the way into low Earth orbit, and I'm also gonna have to use that external tank to do my uh, TLR. So. Um, I'm gonna go to the moon uh, with that external tank, do my, my translunar injection burn, just because, you know, the real space shuttle couldn't fire those RS-25 engines without the external tank, obviously, because the space shuttle didn't carry any liquid fuel or oxidizer on it, 
Um, but, you know, uh, this is a little different. I did put some liquid oxygen, liquid, liquid oxygen and uh, liquid fuel uh, in the space shuttle. So we'll, we'll hold on to this external tank, do the rest of my burn with the RS-25 engines or the, or the Vector engines, whichever, whichever one you want to say they are. And then I'm going to drop off that external tank. And then I actually have two more engines that are going to fire uh, burning up the fuel that I have on board. So we're not going to use those uh, RS-25 engines, mainly because they are uh, tilted. I, I tilted them a little bit for launch because you need it to, to make a, a balanced launch vehicle when you're lifting off. So I'm going to shut those down. See, I, I, I made a collision course with the moon so we can drop off that external tank. And that external tank won't be floating around and debris, making debris for me in the future. And so uh, there we go. I finished my TLR. Uh, and now we are off to the moon. And then we'll do my circularization or my braking maneuver, whichever one uh, you guys like to call it. Get into a nice low lunar orbit. And then we're going to transfer the crew to the uh, space shuttle or the space... Uh, Jesus, this, from the space shuttle to the lander. And then we're going to perform a, perform a landing and then uh, and then dock with it again and, and bring our Kerbals back home. So uh, I, I like to call this a, a mix between the, the Energy Rocket, the, the STS, the space, shuttle, space Transport System, and the Apollo because it's kind of... Kind of uses all three of those of those methods, whereas um, the the Buran, as as I already talked about, uses the uh, the liquid fuel and the jet engines. The Buran did have jet engines that it would use to fly itself to the landing uh, landing strip back on Earth. And then uh, you know I, I said it's a space shuttle just because it's got those space that space shuttle look, you know, the American look to it or I don't know whatever it is it's it's using American engines the RS-25 engines it's using a, a big orange external tank like the like the space shuttle but this is also going into low lunar orbit which neither one could do only Apollo has been able to do that so far with the Saturn V rocket so it's kind of a mix of all three uh, a mix of the, the Apollo brand and space shuttle so here we are the landing perfect landing we just touched down and now we can do our little EVA deploy our experiments as a uh, as we were, you know, doing a normal lunar mission, let's just name this quarantine madness, uh, spiraling deeper into depression. That that sounds like a good plaque name. Okay, so let's get our experiments out. Um, make sure we've got enough power. I like to use RTGs because you know, solar power is cool and all, but nuclear power is better. And then uh, and now we're gonna we're gonna sit back, wait on the lunar surface, wait for our shuttle to come back around. I'm gonna wait for it to come up overhead and then uh, we'll fire up our uh, ascent stage there we go and we are off so now we're going to meet back up with the uh space shuttle that's in orbit uh you know as as probably any other person would do in a in a lunar lunar uh rendezvous lunar orbital rendezvous something method I, i'm not you know I, i'm not quite sure i've been drinking this, this budweiser 40 ouncer here so you know uh i'm just chilling uh, social distancing and whatnot yeah 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 Whatever, but anyway, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna meet up um, with the space shuttle. I ran out of fuel. I didn't I didn't test the <laughs> the ascent stage good enough, so I ran out of fuel. I'm actually burning model propellant right now to uh, to get into uh, the circular orbit, uh, and I actually did almost run out of fuel. So you'll see me here in just a sec. I had to switch to the the space shuttle to actually uh, get closer to the. Uh, to the lander there because I, I didn't want to use up all that fuel and not be able to dock with it. So uh, so that's what I did there. Uh, you know, problem solving 101 just got it right. So yeah, so there, so there now you can see me. Yep, I'm getting nice close encounter. And then I'm going to have to switch over to that, that shuttle. Yep, there we go. And then um, I'm just going to kind of get a little bit closer. I'm going to use some of that liquid fuel. I don't have any RCS or reaction control thrusters on the... Uh, on the space shuttle just because I hate the way it looks they, they stick out and they they look weird and it just doesn't look good I wish I wish that the space shuttle that that cockpit actually had RCS in it kind of like what the mark 3 uh, uh, capsule is or, or however whatever that is but but anyway I, I wish it to have that where it, where it didn't you didn't have to add parts to have a uh, reaction control because it just it looks bad uh, and, it, and it, it, it has a lot of drag and it, it just a lot of things so here we are coming back in for that landing or that landing, the docking and then um, I didn't have a ton of Delta V left in the space shuttle so uh, once we once we dock and we transfer the crew I'm gonna jettison that uh, the up ascent stage because uh, yeah we don't need it we don't need it anymore but um, 
I kind of wish I would have kept it uh, in some aspect because you'll see when I when I re-enter when I was talking about tumbling and and death spiraling out of out of the air when I'm when I'm re-entering that that did happen that that's what happened. Um, the problem is I ran out of electric charge right as I was coming in for basically the the second to last approach uh, on the Earth or on Kerbin. So what I did is, as you can see, I'm I'm doing my I did my burn to get back to uh, get back to Earth, or I'm doing it currently as 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 we're speaking, as I'm speaking, and uh, and I, I just kind of get a nice high apoapsis, so I'm just barely arrow break. I don't want to come in too fast and then you know blow up in the, in the heat re from re-entering. You want to kind of be gentle about about it. So I make a couple passes around Kerbin. Just to, you know, ward off some speed, slow myself down a little bit so I can come into that nice final approach. Here I'm moving some fuel around, try to balance the craft out a little bit. Didn't really work, uh, unfortunately, but, you know, I gotta try. So there's my first pass. So as you can see, I just kind of skim off the upper atmosphere and then fly around it again, make another pass. And then here we go, there's a second pass. And as you see, every time I'm slowly bringing my apoapsis down because that's 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 what arrow breaking is. Uh, most of you probably already know that. I mean, it's pretty pretty common sense. But if you don't, uh, well, I'm just basically running into the air. What I'm doing is I'm using air friction instead of uh, my rocket engines to uh, accelerate me because you know friction is an acceleration force, right? I'm accelerating in the opposite direction. It's arrow breaking, right? Breaking is is accelerating in the opposite direction. So I'm accelerating the opposite direction, and that is, uh, you know, changing changing my apoapsis because it's an acceleration. You know, it's a, it's a force, but I don't have to use my rocket engines. So, and then there, you can see me. I, I start spinning and spiraling out of control because I I ran out of electric charge. I don't have any uh, I don't have any uh, anything that can that can hold my out attitude. So I had to kind of um, get creative. I tried tried firing my RS25 engines again to, to, to try to. Maybe get some electric charge or stabilize myself. That didn't work. Um, so I'm just gonna have to uh, tumble and re-enter as I am. Uh, this is this is definitely how the real uh, space shuttle uh, re-entered right here. This is um, look at the realism. That yes, that's that's how it works. Uh, luckily, I didn't break anything. I'm I'm surprised that nothing blew up. But I guess I was going slow enough. And then look at this. I just stall back first all almost all the way to the ground i was trying to everything in my power to recover this stall but i just couldn't do it until that last instant there there we go i was able to recover from that stall and then uh fly over to the ksc nice and nice and easy but uh i did this this thing just it flies like a brick as you can see there's another stall i just stalled it on accident you pitch up too fast and all of a sudden the, the rear end comes around and it's, and then it wants to go engine first because that's how physics works. Uh, unfortunately, things like to go the, the most massive first. So, uh, oh, there's another stall. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> this is what I love about the game. This is, this is, it's just challenging. You don't, you don't quite know what's going to happen. Uh, everything just kind of goes wrong sometimes. But you know what? I made it. I made it. Here's coming in for that nice, perfect landing. And it's actually a pretty decent landing. And I still got stuff on the runway over there. I'm such a, I have such a cluttered, cluttered world. I need to just clear up my stuff. But you know, I what you have when you have too many projects going on. But anyway, guys, that concludes the video. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the mission. Uh, if you did, please hit that like button. Uh, maybe let me know uh, what you think in the comments below. If you have any more suggestions for me or any more uh, things you want to see me do, just let me know. Uh, also, please subscribe if you haven't. I need all the support I can get. I want to try to get to 100 subscribers, guys. So uh, let's, let's do it. We can do it. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.